Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome back to my yarn adventures and welcome to all those new subscribers and those people who are checking out the channel for the first time. I'm going to talk about my yarn adventures for this week, a bit of an update. I've got some finished objects, um, some acquisitions and a few patterns to talk about. So let's get started. Thank you to everyone. My shoulder is much better after some physio. It stopped spasming and it's not as sore. I've just not to um, crochet and knit for long periods of time. I've got to take lots of breaks till it gets better. And thank you to everyone who's asked and, um, and inquired about us in the floods. Yes, we do live in a flood prone area. But we're not flooded at the moment. There is lots of rain with localised flooding. The flooding you're seeing on the news is much further south near Brisbane and into New South Wales. It's horrendous. It's heartbreaking to see how much property has been damaged and the poor people that are having to clean up all the mud out of their things and their house. It's just unbelievable. But it does happen in Australia. We have cyclones, we have flooding, we have bushfires, but we always seem to be resilient and do bounce back because we all pitch in and help each other. So my yarn adventures this week. Well, I've been watching a lot of videos and quite a few people are doing what they call their stitch library, which got me thinking about all the patterns I have. In my library the patterns I've either purchased or bought or found I thought oh I might make, late, make that later and I fold them away either on my laptop or in the ring binder file and forgotten about them and then I thought well maybe I'll attack some of my patterns in my stitch library because they're obviously there for a reason I've liked them at some stage so I have finished one of the patterns in my stitch library. The first one I have done, I'll just move that out of the way, is a pattern by da -dun, da -dun, a fellow Yarni podcaster and it is Fiber Floozies, A Man's Best Friend Knitted Beanie. Da -da, that's the one there. This is a paid for pattern I bought off Etsy this year or maybe the end of last year. I know it wasn't that long ago and I really wanted to do it because I like the idea of the dogs and the paw prints and I have completed mine. It's a knitted pattern by the way. Paid for knitted pattern. All patterns, tutorials, channels I talk about will be listed in the, their links will be listed in the description below in case you want to check them out and think you might like to make them. So you ready for my man's best friend Benny? Now it is on this head, it's not very good head, but there you have it. I'll hold it up. Paw prints, little dogs. Um, I thought it turned out really good. I really like it. I made it in this um, lightweight yarn, which was left over from my autumn wing shawl here. I had a bit left over. Now the actual pattern calls for four colours, but I used teal amber gold and navy for the dogs and paw prints so i could use up some of my scrap yarn that was left over but there you have it it's a little bit slouchy on me and thin not too much but, and i really do like the way it turned out i'll probably have another go and make another one um i haven't knitted floats for a while in a few places my floats might be a bit tight but not noticeable from far away so I might need practicing again to do my floats in knitting. Um, the yarn is, I've got a, um, a tag here, it's by Patterns or Patons depending on how you want to pronounce it. Baby Dreamtime Merino 4 ply. They were 50 gram balls which is, da -dum, da -dum, I'm pretty sure it's 100% baby merino wool or merino wool. It's lovely and soft. 100% fine Australian merino wool. Da -da! This one. It was really great to knit with and it was great to crochet with. And considering it's a four ply or a fingering weight or sports weight, whatever you want to call it, it worked really well. I quite liked it. So, first from my stitch library, Man's Best Friend Beanie 
by Fibre Floozy Jill. So then, if you remember, I did actually win some patterns that I shared with you recently. And these were Amigurumi patterns that I won off um, at Charm Grammy Crochet Giveaway. And there were three, and they're all done by YOH Crochet. And I said I couldn't just, I wasn't unsure which one I would start first. Well, I've done one. Of course, I've done Jumping Jacks, the frog. Now, I only really started doing Amigurumi last year. I'm not very good at it, but I will show you my Jumping Jacks, who has been named JJ. Ta -da! Here he is. He has a little bow tie and there's a reason for that. But that is from the pattern. It was so easy to follow. Now I have used scrap yarn. The green was some um, Red Heart Super Saver, half a ball. I bought some yarn last year from a lady up in Coranda who had tubs of yarn outside her shop she was selling. They were doing it tough and she had quite a bit of yarn stash. And I bought two Red Heart um, Super Savers. One was green, and I thought, well, there's enough to do jacks. But I didn't have any yellow, so I did a dark green. But I had enough yellow to do his mouth. Now, the reason I gave him a bow tie is I am notorious for overstuffing amigurumis. And Reed said, I think you've overstuffed his cheeks. But anyway, I thought if I gave him a bow tie, it might distract from his cheeks. But thank you to Sean Grammy. I really enjoyed this. I probably will make one of the others in the future. And yes, there's my JJ. That is Jumping Jacks. I didn't do too bad a job for a beginner. So that was another one from my Stitch Library. So as I said, either purchased or gift patterns, I'll be doing it first and making my way through my Stitch Library. Now... Remember, I bought it, if you've been with me for a couple of weeks, I bought an Addy knitting machine. And um, because my shoulder was sore, I couldn't really use it because I'm right-handed and it was my right shoulder and you crank it around. Even though Reeves did offer to set up a drill where I could plug it in and it, I do it automatic. But I didn't want to do that because I thought that sort of defeats the purpose of using a knitting machine. Well, I've had a go. Um, I've made one beanie and um, it's okay. It is very different to use. So you want to see my beanie? Ta -da! Now, Thing loves this beanie. He wants to keep it. Mainly because this is leftover yarn, more scrap yarn I've used from a poncho I've made him and he wants the matching beanie. Now, with an knitting machine, you roll it up and it's double double you're supposed to be reversible that's the top bit in there it does look long but it stretches out the only issue I have is it can't be completely reversible because I don't know what went wrong there it's like it skipped stitches or something can you see that yeah it's a little weird but and it only just sort of sits on the rolled brim I'm going to cover that with a tag that says handmade with love or made in Australia, something like that. Uh, but yes, Thing does really like it. And he actually does suit this beanie. If I can take a photo of him wearing it, I'll put a picture at the end. But my one and only attempt at my Addy knitting machine. Now, this is Red Heart Aran. It's made in Wangaratta, Victoria for Australia. And the knitting machine does say it's not kind to some acrylic um, yarns and um, cheaper yarns but it went okay until there till the end I really or middle really I don't know what went wrong there but I will have another go the knitting machine is really about um, churning and burning making a lot very quickly like this is like 35 45 minutes finished from start to finish um, Unless I need a lot of hats for charity, which often I can do in winter here, I probably won't churn out that many. I have found a project, a much larger project that takes a lot of time using the knitting machine. 
and if I can sort out enough quality yarn to do this because it would take scrap yarn then I may give that a go later in the year or next year but my 80 mil machine beanie so that's my other finish object now because my shoulder was so sore and I couldn't crochet it motivated me to start writing my pattern for the tea cozy fundraiser I'm having for Emma's quest Emma's a little friend with uh, cerebral palsy, dystonia, the list is endless. And we are fundraising this year for her therapy pool at her forever home to save her mum having to spend money to take her to water therapy. Won't go into the details of why she has to pay for that and the government doesn't or insurance doesn't. But anyway, I said I was going to design a tea cozy and sell it um, probably in the Etsy shop as a bit of a fundraiser for Emma and I wrote started writing out the pattern I've made a sample I've decided to call it Emma's Kisses Dun. there you go that's my first sample while I was writing my pattern the kisses are these are rows of cross stitches like kisses and it's made in pure wool, which I always recommend for tea cozies because of its thermal properties in keeping your teapot warm and the tea in your teapot nice and warm. Now this is yarn, Click Heaton's Country, which is pure wool, um, but they don't have colour numbers, uh, colour names, just colour numbers. So this is like a, a buttery yellow. And this is hot pink. I haven't finished writing the pattern because I'm now experimenting with making a smaller one for a smaller pot. This is a, probably a three to a four cup teapot, but a lot of people have one to two cup pots. And I'm trying to be able to add to the pattern where you can do a smaller one for a smaller teapot. But that will be Emma's Kisses when I finally get it finished and put it on sale, the pattern. What do you think? Do you like it? Is it a bit boring? It's crocheted and I'm doing it easy enough for a, let's say, an experienced beginner to make. But that will be Emma's Kisses. So that's sort of like a finished project come still a whip going, the actual pattern. Now, my acquisition, I bought some stuff from a place called Glorious Yarns um, down south in Queensland. Now mainly, I was chasing um, higher, higher sharp knitting needles in a certain size and I got, and length, and I got them both there. Now for me, they were in South Queensland, where I am, and they were $16 a pair, which seemed a little bit expensive when the ones I bought a couple of months back from New South Wales were $12 a pair but unfortunately they didn't have these sizes so I bought these two and their postage for you know a couple of pairs of knitting needles was what I thought a little high but I did look at the yarn they had on clearance and they had some I won't take it out opal yarn and it is four pliers 75% wool 25% Polamide. I'm pretty sure this might be made in Germany, opal yarn. I have had it before. Now these are normally about $20 a ball and they had them on sale for $12 a ball. They're pretty much 100 gram balls. And the four ply yarn, I thought those two colours went together well. So I had that sent with the knitting needles because it didn't increase the postage and it made it worthwhile. Because for some reason I am really starting to like using four ply or much lighter weight fingering sport weight yarn um i think it was this i think alex from my yarn in corner her pattern got me addicted to the four ply yarn so yes i have bought these with a project in mind but my project list 2022 is huge but anyway that was my acquisition and how you know it's in my state but it actually cost me more than buying it from another state which is really a bit strange I think so what else have I got let me have a look ah oh, I'll get these the other thing is 
no doubt when you turn your news on. For us, it's the flooding down south and the invasion in Ukraine. Um, both are very heartbreaking. Um, it's quite it's got to the point you really don't want to turn the TV on around news time. You know, I was glad to see the end to all the reporting on the pandemic, but then we went from one disaster to another. And it, it's been, you know, it can affect your mental health if you continually watch it. I was talking to one of my bosses at a meeting this week and she said she's got to the point where she can only watch one news bulletin a day um, when she gets home because it just affects her too much. So with that in mind, on Facebook and Instagram, I saw some people promoting that you could buy patterns to help our crafty friends in the Ukraine off Etsy. The Etsy set up a search that you can search by country. And I thought, well, that's one way I can help. And I went into Etsy and I searched and I found a couple of patterns. Now, there is a warning with this, which Reeves pointed out to me. So the first pattern I found, which obviously I was going to buy, was Bear Yoshi, a polar bear. Isn't he cute? Now this was about 10 Australian um, dollars to buy. That's him on the back. A few people had posted pictures and made him with a scarf as well and made him look like the Coca-Cola polar bear. Now this is a pattern by Sarista, and forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, Susha. There is a K in there, but I think the K might be silent. And she is a pattern designer in Ukraine. She has quite a few patterns and she sold them over a number of years. And it was email me PDF from the Ukraine. Now the patterns can come in Russian, um, Ukraine or English. So make sure you pick the right version. However, I also bought this one because I thought it was cute. Now this is a pattern from Ukraine, but it was discounted and it was only $5. Um, and you know, it was emailed to me from the Ukraine and it looks fine. However, there was a third pattern I was looking at. And as Reeb said, no matter what the, the depressing things are going on in the world, the human nature, there's always someone trying to make money through a scam on the back of these. And you have to be careful. You have to really check out the designer is from the Ukraine. You make sure they're being emailed to you from the Ukraine because they can still get internet and a bit of internet and access their bank accounts at the moment. And just doubly check because the third pattern I was checking out when I did Reeves' complete check and didn't rush into it, it was actually going to be emailed to me from the USA. So there you have it. We all want to do our bit and help. And yes, just really make sure, I know if you want to help, that your money is going to the people you want to help. Working for a charity, I know how many bogus scams come out and people donate and then realize it wasn't authentic. Um, always, if you're going to donate your cash directly, always pick a reputable charity that's been around for a while, like Red Cross, UNICEF, Caritas, but also check that their administration fees that they take out, out aren't extremely high. Um, I did get a bogus um, asking for money from a charity through my work email for Ukraine, and it was totally bogus. We checked it out, and it had nothing to do with helping the people in Ukraine. So yes, I've done my bit. I bought two patterns that I love, not because um, I just felt I had to pick two. I bought two I really like. So make sure if you do buy a pattern to help the ladies or gentlemen who craft in the Ukraine, that they are patterns you like and do plan to make and will enjoy making, and we can do our bit to help. So that's about it for me. I'll just check all my notes. I think I've covered everything on my table that I've been doing over the last week, which I didn't think was very much, but when you put it all together, it's actually quite a bit. 
So, what have you guys been up to? What Are you going to try patterns from your stitch library? What do you think to my tea cozy from Emma's, called Emma's Kisses, the pattern? And tell me what you think of JJ. Did I do a reasonable job? I'd love to read your comments. I do enjoy reading them, especially as I'm not turning on the TV. Today, I was um, crocheting and I was listening to music. I was actually listening to Meat Loaf's Bad Out of Hell this morning. And then this afternoon, yes, I know I don't look the type, I was listening to Willie Nelson. My neighbors, neighbors must scratch their head. They can't work out what sort of music I like. But I wasn't turning on the TV. Um, I just didn't want to see any more sad news today. I wanted to have an upbeat Sunday before I go back to work. Guys, please leave your comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, I hope you stick around and keep following my yarn adventures. Remember to stay well, keep safe, and tell someone you love them today. You never know. They may not be there tomorrow. Bye for now.